The inverse tangent of x plus the inverse tangent of 1 on x. This is something we can simplify. In fact, it's actually the left-hand side of a useful identity so subtle that it's never properly taught until now. Consider the function f as our expression. First, we should see what f of minus x is equal to, because it would be useful to know if this function is odd or even or neither. Clearly, the function is odd, because f of minus x equals minus f of x. And that was just due to the fact that the inverse tan is an odd function. Keep that in mind. But what's really strange is when we differentiate the function. We get f prime of x is equal to 1 on 1 plus x squared, plus 1 on 1 plus 1 on x squared, times minus 1 on x squared by the chain rule. Distributing the x squared in the denominator keeps this cancellation. f prime is 0. That is strange. We have a function whose derivative is 0, and not just for a particular value, but infinitely many values of x. Of course, x equals 0 is not going to be one of those values, because the function itself is undefined there. But it's evident that for positive values of x and negative values, the function has a zero derivative. This isn't your stock standard function. There is a bit of a problem with x equals zero. Because there's a discontinuity there, and that's the only discontinuity, that's the only place our function can change. Because everywhere else there's a zero derivative. So the function has to look something like this. Two lines, where on the right side of the y-axis, we have y equals a for some positive a. On the negative side, we have y equals minus a. How can we find the value of a? Now it's just a matter of trying one point. Let's say x equals 1. We see that f of 1 is simply pi on 2. This means a has to be pi on 2. And so we have our function. It's not a curve or a line, but some piecewise function with two lines. In fact, we can write this in terms of the sine function. I don't mean the sine wave, but S-I-G-N. So for positive numbers, the sine function gives 1. For negative numbers, it gives minus 1. And for 0, it gives 0. Our function f is just a scaled form of this function, except to x equals 0. So our grand formula is this. The inverse tangent of x plus the inverse tangent of 1 on x is the sine of x times pi on 2. Now, if we rearrange this and take x greater than 0, we get a much more useful form. The inverse tan of 1 on x is complementary to the inverse tan of x. Now, here's an exercise for you. I know you probably don't like exercise, but this will be fun. Try to determine a simpler form of this expression. The inverse sine of x plus the inverse cosine of x. Do not use Desmos. Don't cheat. Math is all about exploring. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It's completely free and I, I kind of need it. Bruh.